This is BBC World News. I'm Yalda Hakim. The headlines. School in the San Antonio area of Texas are increasing security precautions after the shooting on Wednesday, which killed 19 children aged between 7 and 10. Two adults also died when a teenager opened fire. Police later shot him dead. The long-awaited report into lockdown parties at Downing Street says there were serious failures at the heart of the British government. Boris Johnson, who was fined for attending a gathering, says he accepts full responsibility. Russia says it would be prepared to open a humanitarian corridor which would allow Ukraine to resume exporting grain and other foodstuffs via the Black Sea, but only in return for the lifting of Western sanctions. Police in Pakistan have used tear gas as supporters of the former Prime Minister Imran Khan marched on Islamabad to dis demand new elections. And there are all your latest headlines. Now on BBC World News, the latest business news from across the globe. World Business Report. Dancing with a debt default, the US closes a major loophole on Russia's foreign loan repayments, pushing Moscow closer to the edge. Pfizer's free-for-all, the US medicines giant, promises to sell 23 drugs at cost price to some of the world's poorest countries. Hello, I'm Ben Bulos. Very warm welcome to World Business Report. Russia has been pushed a big step closer to defaulting on its international debt payments because of US sanctions over its invasion of Ukraine. Now, this is because the US government has allowed a loophole which allowed payments to investors to expire a few hours ago. It means President Putin's government is unlikely to be able to make repayments due on Friday in US dollars. Moscow says it will make the payments in rubles, but that would breach the terms of the loans. Russia's finance minister, Anton Siluanov, said in a statement we have the money and the willingness to pay. Let's speak to Chris Weaver, Chief Executive of Macro Advisory, which is a business and economics consultancy focusing on Russia. He joins us now from Moscow. It's interesting this because technically, if the payment can't be made in dollars, it's a breach of the contract, so it's a technical default. But it's not a default in the sense of the, the debtor not having the money to pay. Yes, it, you're right. It is a technical default, but it doesn't matter. It's still a default. Now, there is a question mark actually over uh, the payments that you mentioned due this week, because there is a provision that allows that debt to be serviced in other currencies, perhaps in, in euros. So probably uh, Russia might be able to still make the payment due this week. The, the next sort of like hard deadline uh, in, in terms of a payment that must be paid in dollars only, it comes up on June 24th. And then uh, th that cannot be paid in anything other than dollars. Uh, after a 30-day grace period, which is always allowed, it means that default day is likely to be July 24th. So the clock is now ticking. There's question marks over some technicalities. OK, so what would, what would the effect be then for Russia uh, and for investors if indeed this technical default does happen? Right. Well, actually, uh, this would be the first uh, foreign debt default by Russia since 1917 uh, because of the revolution. In 1998, it defaulted on domestic debt only. Now, in terms of the impact, of course, it has no kind of short to medium term impact in the Russian economy because they, the, the country has plenty of money and is earning about $25, $27 billion per month. Uh, exporting oil and gas and other materials right now. So the country is cash rich, doesn't need to borrow. Uh, longer term, of course, it will have a, a, an issue as the economy, if it does get back onto a recovery path and it will need to engage more with the global economy, then that even that technical default will, will hang over the country in the same way as a bad credit rating would, would hang over an individual or, or, or a company. And then the other question, which we don't know uh, and won't know for a while, is what is the implications for corporate debt? Because a lot of debt borrowed by, by uh, Russian companies uh, don't, will have a provision uh, linked to sovereign debt. In other words, the, the, there's always a reference point uh, to the state debt for, for any company. Mm. Uh, and uh, if the state then defaults, 
very often you find that that then triggers an early repayment clause in corporate debt. So okay. while the, the, the economy and the government itself will not be greatly impacted by technical default, other than, if you like, the financial embarrassment, mm. it could actually lead to some very uh, quick and severe problems for, for companies in Russia that would be required to repay their debt immediately because of the default. OK. Uh, they can't really cry foul over this because... They've done exactly the same when it comes to energy. They've demanded that countries pay in rubles. So they can't really uh, say, hang on, we're being pushed into a situation uh, because of animosity from foreign powers, can they? Uh, well, you're right. It's, it's, it is, there is a, an element of kettle pot black here. Um, they, I guess the, the Russian side, and, I'm, and I am simply now relaying what the finance ministry say, what they say is that under the ruble payment, of course, foreign buyers of gas can still pay in dollars and euros. They must pay into a special account in Gazprom Bank, and Gazprom Bank then converts that to rubles for sending back to Moscow. So they say, well, you can still pay in foreign currency, except you have to use the new mechanism. And what they're saying is that uh, they should also be allowed to pay uh, dollar debt using other currencies, using different mechanisms. Uh, but as you say, it's it's a technical argument. The fact of the matter is that if uh, Russia does not pay its debt obligations on the day it's due, it mm. will be in default and it will be recorded as such. OK, Chris, thank you very much. Chris Weaver from Macro Advisory. Thank you. Now, the World Economic Forum in the Swiss resort of Davos is often dismissed as an expensive talking shop. But the US pharmaceutical giant Pfizer has used it to launch a plan to sell 23 of its medicines at cost price. So for no, no profit in 45 of the world's poorest countries. It follows criticism of the company, including from its own shareholders, that they've been profiting from selling COVID vaccines around the world. Here's the chief executive, Albert Bourla. This includes all 27 low-income countries, as well as all 18 countries that have transitioned from low income to lower middle income classification in the last 10 years. This commitment will include all future Pfizer medicines and vaccines as they are launched, discovered and launched as well. Let's speak to our business correspondent, Samira Hussein, who's in New York. Why are they doing this now, Samira? Well, they did face a lot of criticism during the pandemic because they were profiting from COVID vaccines that they were selling to um, to those more disadvantaged nations. And remember that there were other pharmaceutical companies that were not doing that, that they were actually selling their, their medicines at cost. The other point, of course, is the fact that you're seeing a lot more revolt coming from shareholders that are demanding some kind of accountability for the fact that you see these companies, these these pharmaceutical companies that are just making so much money. And a lot of these medicines are really just unattainable for large swaths of the world. And so I think because there's just a lot more push coming from within, from, from shareholders, I think that's why Pfizer has decided it's going to do this. And presumably they can do it because they have made billions from the COVID vaccine that they developed. And it's not just the COVID vaccine from other from other medicines that it has developed over the years. They are able to do this. And I think this is something that, you know, many people who are at Davos have said that this is a good thing and that perhaps we're going to see that other pharmaceutical companies are going to do something similar. Uh, so it is a good step in it, it is a good step in the, in the right direction, because if you think about in terms of money, where all of the money comes from research and development, that really does come from the United States dominantly in Western countries. So it really does make a lot of sense. Uh, and I suppose, um, you know, the, uh, it'll be watched because of the turbulence we've seen in the markets over the, the last few weeks and, you know, and, and, and how, the, how investors, how markets react to such a big announcement from such a big player. Well, but I think, you know, if you just take a step back, we're just seeing a lot more uh, shareholders getting a lot more involved in terms of wanting to see the company that they are a part of do more good work around the world. And I think this is something that you're seeing in a lot of different companies, whether it be the way that they are, you know, forcing their companies to em em embrace better labor laws or labor rules, or in this case, helping out those that are in need.
Okay, Samira, thank you. As always, Samira Hussein there in New York. Let's take a brief look at some other main business news around, and protesters have disrupted the annual meeting of the French energy giant Total. Greenpeace, Greenpeace France says 300 activists were at the meeting in Paris where they demanded the company stop its oil and gas operations that are damaging the climate. The company says 89% of shareholders backed its climate change plan, which aims to make it carbon neutral by 2030. It also said it was buying half of US renewable energy firm Clearway Energy Group for $1.6 billion. 91,000 car owners in the UK are likely to share a $240 million payout from the German car maker Volkswagen. The claimant's lawyers say they have reached an out-of-court settlement over the diesel emissions cheating scandal. The car maker was found to have installed software which meant the cars produced lower emissions in tests than in actual driving conditions. The scandal had cost VW uh, millions in settlements. That's it. Thanks for watching.